so he was saying in one of his episodes that when you're reading, you actually are uh, creating an inaudible sound. So your vocal cords are actually working even though you're not using them. So wow. I wonder if that vibration is um, also kind of, I guess it has to be. It's the same if it's creating that co coherence throughout your body. Well, I would think about it like any other input where if like if you're eating food, that food is going to merge with your cells, with your consciousness. It's going to impact you. Mm -hmm. Like if you eat a chia seed smoothie, it's going to have a different effect on you than eating a cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you read one book, it's going to have a different effect than another book. And so it's like the, the consciousness of the book is merging with your consciousness, not to get too esoteric. Um, but I had not thought about that, that about the, the larynx function or that you're making like an inaudible sound. Mm -hmm. But I think that Jim Quick, who's uh, another Ziva graduate and brain yeah. And a friend of me too. Yeah, oh, yeah? I saw. You. I was like, oh my gosh, we're all kind of connected in this yeah. weird way. I love Jim, um, but I think he te you know he teaches speed reading and mm -hmm. he teaches people how to read a book a week. And I think it has something to do with transcending that piece of that you're not speaking it to where it's really just sort of like going right into the brain. So that'd be an interesting thing to explore. Mm -hmm. I wanted to check out that course. I'm like, imagine that superpower of being able to read a book a day. I think oh, is it a book a day? That some he does? people are doing a book a day. I think at his um, height, maybe he was that was his goal, which is insane. Wow. You're just downloading so much information. <laughs> I remember my head of marketing. She went. She took her second maternity leave, and she was like, "Yeah, I want to get the Jim Quick course to learn to speed read on my maternity leave." And I was like, <laughs> "Perhaps you forgot what maternity leave is like." But you want to be reading a book a day, girl? <laughs> it's like, oh it's not like gosh. a break. <laughs> also. Like how disconnected so many of us women are with that whole process is astounding to me because for we have this program that we have to be do, do, do all the time to when we are doing maternity leave. We're like, well, what can I do while I'm on maternity leave? What can I learn? How can I make this the most valuable? And it's like, no, that is supposed to be internal. Yeah. I mean, some people don't want you to leave the bed for two weeks. Like in a lot of Asian cultures, you don't leave the house for 40 days. Yeah. Like it's very serious. Yeah. My housekeeper, um, she's Spanish, and I was walking around the house without socks right after, and she's like, no, 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 no. You need to put socks on and a hat, and it's all about like staying warm and like protecting your chi and your energy, yeah. and she's like, you get back in bed. Uh. And I was so grateful for her because she was part of that female tribe that I really didn't have in the postpartum, mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful for her, but a lot of us don't have that, and we're not even being that for ourselves. Like We're just so disconnected with what our body needs. Mm -hmm. um, which is why like all of the work you're doing is is so incredible and I guess to touch uh, back on the coherence and like that um, sand exercise have you seen the images of the snowflakes so they have the if you charge it with like a word or it'll be a love will be a very beautiful ornate organized um, and symmetrical which is the key uh, image and then if you do something like hate or anger or um, like what is it like a low frequency word any of like uh, like maybe um, jealousy. Like jealousy, right? Mm -hmm. Rage. Those will be very disorganized. And in some of these books that we're reading to our our old oldest, they're like these conscious parenting bedtime books. They'll be the like those themes exist in the story. So you'll see the organization. There's this one called The Hug Factory, which is one of my favorite books. I think okay. everyone should get it. Okay. And it shows um, the symmetry of like joy and happiness and love and acceptance. Like it shows the molecules of the It water. shows like they have this hug that looks like a cell or maybe an atom. And then all around it, it shows its um, quantum field around it. Mm. And when it's happy and, and open... Mm -hmm. it's all organized and it keeps it's like fractaling out mm -hmm. and then when it's sad and it's trying to control it gets it calls it a sticky web and it's disorganized and it's chaos and i'm like it makes me think of the snowflakes wow. so it's cool to see the evolution of this science and how it's it's going to the younger generation and that ho they're going to hopefully be better off than we were yeah i'm definitely yeah. going to get that book for my son that sounds amazing yeah and and it's such a tricky thing like so that that book's called the hidden messages in water by dr mori umoto and and I, I quote it in my book because I think it's fascinating science that just like being around a word or having an intention or frequency could change, you know, the molecular structure of, of water. And again, if we are 70 to 90 percent water, then like what we're putting into our body, the frequency really, really matters. It's going to mm -hmm. affect how you feel, how you perform. And, and yet as you're saying that, like – I because as I'm now getting into this more like somatic work and this more like like feeling your feelings like I just got out of five days in a cave and the only my only agenda was to feel my feelings and I'm wondering how we hold the simultaneity 
as we teach our children, as we teach ourselves, of like it is so important to find things that bring you joy and to take time postpartum and to, you know, be in bliss. And how do we not then spiritually bypass and skip the mandatory steps of feeling all of it, the rage, the sadness, the fear? And and I'm really open. I'm in the question right now. Like I created a kids meditation training called Ziva Kids and and in it, I framed like the big feelings as stormies. So we've got like the mad stormy, the sad stormy and the scared stormy. And the idea was that I wanted to give them the frame that like every storm runs out of rain, the Maya Angelou quote, and that the sun is always shining, but that they're allowed to feel those feelings. Like if you try to make the rain stop raining, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But if you just like accept the rain, love the rain, feel the rain and trust that, yes, the sun is shining on the other side. And so it's like we don't want we don't want ourselves or kids to get stuck in that stuff, but we also don't want to bypass it. Because it's like if we bypass it, if we're constantly trying to numb our fear or pain or sadness, then we're limiting the amount of ecstasy that we could feel on the other side.